Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I finally have this video up that has been highly requested this week after I showed a little snippet on my Instagram stories. And I was talking about using the print and cut feature on my Silhouette Cameo. Now this video may not apply to everybody if you don't have a Silhouette Cameo. Um, if you don't have it though, I would really urge you to watch the video because it may be something that you want to invest in and have um, to help out with your crafting. And so I'm gonna show you uh, how I get the printables from Illustrated Faith uh, cut out and uh, set up easily in that program. I've had some issues in the past with Silhouette Studio. That's the program that you use to do all your designing and stuff. Um, and I've had some issues getting print and cut to work well, but I think I finally have figured it out. And the newest version of Silhouette Studio uh, actually makes this whole process a lot easier than when I tried this back months and months and months ago. So uh, it's definitely an investment, but if you are somebody who does a lot of printables or maybe you're somebody who has like arthritis or something like that where fussy cutting is just very difficult for you, um, this might be something that's worth investing in. Now, Silhouette Studio, the program that you work in is a free program. So even if you don't have the machine to cut things out, you can still use that program to resize things and do some of the similar things that I do in Photoshop uh, in Silhouette Studio. So if you guys want, let me know in the comments. I'll start doing some more uh, Silhouette Studio tutorials. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable in Silhouette Studio. I used it for my Etsy business for several years. Um, and so I've kind of gotten where I can make things work how I need it to. So uh, I'm going to show you just basic ways to do print and cut today and then uh, we'll kind of go from there. So uh, this is a printable that I printed from Illustrative Faith. This one is still available. It's an older set by Brandy Kincaid. I love, love, love it. I will link it down below for you guys. And um, you'll notice these little extra marks on here and this is what needs to be on there to send it through the machine to cut. But um, once your machine cuts it out, you have all of these pieces that have like the perfect border or you can do no border if you want. If you are still somebody who loves to fussy cut, I will link my tip Tuesday down below where I give some tips for fussy cutting. Um, but this machine does all of that for me. Now I will say that sets like this that have very defined uh, edges like this black outline or this, the color is very solid on the outside are much easier to use the print and cut feature than something like these. Now this set over here is from Elaine Davis. I love, love Elaine's uh, kits and her stuff, but she has this little bit softer, more painterly uh, effect on some of her printables or something like this where it's got a, a white area is much more difficult to use the print and cut feature. So obviously I was able to do it, but I'm not gonna show you how to do this one um, now because it's a little bit more complicated and something like this might be better to hand cut out. So for today's video, I'll just show you the basic, uh, easier ones to print and cut. So we'll go jump over on my computer and I'll kind of show you how to get these set up in Silhouette Studio. Okay, so here we are in Silhouette Studio. This is the designer program that comes with the Silhouette Cameo uh, cutting machine. You can download this for free. Uh, I will link it down below, even if you don't have the cut machine. It's kind of nice. I like to work in here sometimes with my printables just because it's a little bit more user-friendly than Photoshop. Now, I do have the designer edition, so I've paid a little bit extra to have the next upgraded um, edition. So I think only one step today is easier with designer edition. Everything else you can do with just the basics. So uh, I'm just opened up into a regular uh, eight and a half by 11 sized page. Uh, I am working in the newest version. So if you go to the help, it should say yeah, 4.1 right here. So um, I hadn't used this in months and months and months. And so when I logged back on, I realized there was a new edition. And so I've had to kind of retrain myself how to use this, but there's definitely some benefits to being in the 4.1 edition. Now I know that there are still some bugs, so you just got to kind of weigh out um, what works for you if you're somebody who's been using Silhouette Studio for a while. Um, I know some people are having problems with the newest edition, 
but I'm I'm so far doing okay. So uh, this is the edition that I'm working in. And the nice thing about Designer Edition is I can drag and drop uh, PDF files into here. I don't think you can do PDF files in the uh, free version. So I will link my video down below where I show how to convert PDF into JPEG files. And like I said, all of this is probably a little bit easier if you've got some comfort using a computer. Let's just say that. So I am in where I keep all of my Illustrated Faith printables and we are going to be working with the uh, Raining Blessings set. And you can see I have it here as a PDF and so I can just drag this and drop it right into Silhouette Studio. Uh, Silhouette Studio runs a little janky on my computer. I have a pretty decent quality computer, but it kind of is a brat, so we'll see what it does. Okay, so I'm going to import it as a vector. I haven't really noticed a difference um, doing what I'm doing, you know, using it as an image or a vector. Somebody might have more information about that. That would be great. <laughs> but I'll just go ahead and hit OK, and it'll bring it over into the program for me here. So I'm going to, right off the bat, I'm going to rotate this so that uh, it'll fit on that page. If you hold shift while you're rotating, it'll rotate in uh, increments that make it a little bit easier to get straight. Now I am working on Windows machines, so just heads up, I've never worked with a Mac. And so anytime that I say control something, I believe it's command whatever on a Mac. So like if I'm gonna copy something, control C in a Windows or command C in a Mac. So just, just there's that. So we'll go ahead and rotate this. And I'm going to zoom in so we can really see what we're doing here. Okay, and so what we're going to want to do is at this point, there are no lines that tell the machine where to cut. They are just looking at this as one solid image. And so we've got to give it directions as to where to cut. So you're going to come over here to your little butterfly. <clears throat> and this is our trace box. So we can go ahead and select trace area. I have found that it's much easier to work one element at a time as opposed to highlighting the entire page and trying to do all of these at once. Sometimes it works, but I find it better just to do one at a time. So we're going to trace this girl first. And everywhere that's yellow is where it's wanting to create a cut line. Now, I don't want to cut out her headband and her buttons and all that goodness. So I'm going to come over to outline. And so now we're telling it just to cut around the outside, but it still is cutting a lot. So you're going to fuss with these two settings here, threshold and despeckle threshold, to get that line to look how you want it. So I first increased the threshold pretty high, as high as I can take it before it starts getting fuzzy. And you can see the higher I go, it's starting to weed out all that extra junk. So that's a probably, because if I go here, you can see I'm getting this yellow line and getting some extra stuff. So I'm going to knock it down just a little bit. And at this point, I'm still getting where, it, you know, it's going to cut around the outside of her, which is great. That's what I want. But it's also wanting to cut out all of these other little pieces in the gray box. And I don't want that. And now in the older versions of Silhouette, it was really fussy to mess with all this. But the new version uh, of Silhouette Studio has this despeckle threshold that is amazing. <laughs> it makes your life so much easier. So by adjusting this up, it's slowly going to weed out all of these extra little tidbits that are outside of this main image. I don't know what voodoo magic is in this where it knows what I'm wanting to do, <laughs> but it works. So I'm just going to bump this up until all I have outlined is my girl. So you can see this yellow line around my girl. That's what's going to be your cut line. So I want to trace the outer edge because I'm just doing a cut around the outside of that image. And now I don't know if you can see, but there is a red cut line now all around her. Now, I personally like to add a little bit of a white border. Um, one, just because I like the look of that, but it's also very difficult to get an accurate cut um, on this machine. It is a machine. It's not perfect. And so sometimes when I try to cut right up against that black line, it's not great. It'll end up slightly shifted and it's thrown off. So I found it easier to do a little bit of a halo. So if you come over here to the star, this is our offset panel. 
And I'm going to go ahead, she's still highlighted. You can see I've still, or I'll click on that red line, so that's selected, and I'm going to offset that red line. And so now you can see it's added a second red line offset with a halo. Now, I personally like to come over here and change this to 0.05 apply that's about how much white space I like now there is two lines here so we want to go back into that first line and delete that so we don't want to cut that twice so now she's got this red line and this is where the machine is going to cut around this girl so I can go through and one at a time start highlighting and tracing all these pieces for something like this where it's words um, I sometimes have to do a little bit more of a halo so I'm gonna go ahead and just select trace area I try to make this box you know as small as I can around that so I'm not getting too much extra junk come over here to outline so now you can see that at this point it's going to cut out each individual letter and you may want that in some cases but in this case I just want one solid piece so I'm going to go over I'm going to increase my threshold kind of smooth things out a little bit and uh, I'm not going to despeckle this one because it's going to start untracing all of my letters and I don't want that. I want at this point things to be traced. So I'm going to go ahead and trace outer edge and then I'm going to click on that red outline and I want to make it so it doesn't cut out individual letters. So I'm going to come back over here to the star offset function. I'm going to offset and so now it's created this offset where it cuts out that entire piece. If you bring this down to the 0 0.05, you can see it's still um, going to go ahead and just cut it out as one piece. Sometimes you have to kind of adjust this and it needs to be a little bit higher um, just so you don't get too many corners and things. So I'll go ahead and apply that and then I'm going to go in and click on that first line and delete that. Now what you can see in this particular one is I've got this red line around the outside but it's also got this little piece in the inside that it's wanting to cut out and I don't necessarily want that. There's two little red pieces. So if I right click and hit release compound that's going to separate all of these pieces. So this is a piece, this outline, and then these two here. This may seem super complicated. Pause, rewind, rewatch it, <laughs> do it a few times. If I hold the shift button and click on this outer line. Now I only have these two inner boxes selected. Hit delete and those are gone. So now I only have this outside line and that just um, makes a, a cut easier. You could go in and cut right against the line here but I found that the more angles, the more you know shape changes you have, the less nice your cuts are. So you want something that's a little bit smoother around the outside and that's going to give you a better cut in the end. So I can go through and do that for all of these different items on here. I've already gone ahead and done that on this page here. Let me change this. It looks more like the other one real quick. Okay, so I went ahead and did, you know, outlined every single little piece here until I've got this where you can see every uh, piece is outlined with a red outline and an offset. Now, I do go ahead and uh, click drag to select everything and then control G or command G so everything's grouped together. In this piece here, if it's not all grouped together, you can see I can move my background independent of my cut lines and then I get in trouble. <laughs> so I want to highlight everything, control G, and that groups everything so it moves around together. So we'll go ahead and finish up by working with this file here. And for this to cut in your machine, the machine needs to know positioning and where to cut. So you need to come over here to your page setup and we need to add registration marks. So you're gonna come over here and add your, whatever machine it is, I'm using the Cameo. And it's gonna add these little lines and this is what is read by the laser in the machine so it can adjust and know where to cut. Now, these files from Illustrated Faith are um, eight and a half by 11 and when they are that full size, what you will see, let me work on this one here so you can see what that looks like. 
Okay, so this is the original eight and a half by 11. If I was to turn on cut marks over here or registration marks, sorry, you can see that my girl and some of these pieces are out in this gray area and also outside of this red box. And you wanna make sure that all of your items are within this red box and not touching these gray hash areas or you're going to have issues with your cut. So you are going to have to resize these so that it fits down into there. So I can resize this. I'm losing this piece. That's okay. Um, resize this so that it fits within those cut lines. That's the only down thing, downside to using the Cameo for doing your fussy cutting is you're not getting the actual size of your cut files. You are having to make them a little bit smaller just so that they fit within these marks. So this file here is that one that I had saved. I've already resized it. So now you can see all of my cut lines and images are within this red boundary box and they are also not touching this gray area. This piece over here is okay because I'm not going to cut out um, the branding. I'm only going to cut out where I have those red lines. So I hope that makes sense. If not, definitely rewind, rewatch it, play around with it. I just kind of want to give you guys what works for me. So at this point now I can go ahead and print this. So if I go to file print, I can print it out. I've already printed this out. Um, and then I can send it through my machine. So let's say I've gone ahead and printed it. I have it all loaded up into my machine. If you don't know how to do that, there's plenty of videos out there showing how to do that. I'm not going to show that in this video, but uh, I have it loaded up into my machine. I can hit send, which is going to send this cut uh, file to my cutting machine. And I want to change my material. So I'm working with Nina 65 pound white cardstock. And so I've gone ahead and created my own uh, user defined cut settings. The cut settings that I found work best for me are a uh, cut uh, on level six, a speed of five, and a force of 33. I like to make two passes uh, just because I um, am using an older blade and so I want to make sure I go around twice make sure I get a good clean cut but these are the settings that work best for me everybody's machine is going to be a little bit different and you may have to adjust these but for Nina 65 pound um, these are the settings that I would use uh, I've already gone ahead and cut this out but I would hit send and it's going to go ahead and send this to my machine and cut everywhere where you see these red lines so uh, let's jump back over and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all cut out Okay, so I went ahead and put that printout onto my mat. My mat is filthy, and honestly, I'm okay with that because I found that a dirty mat is a little bit better when I'm cutting out cardstocks because then my cardstock doesn't get super stuck to my mat. So <laughs> ignore the dirtiness, but I went ahead and adhered it um, in the corner of the mat, sent it through, and let it cut and do its thing. And so now I can just pull this off. And you can see I've got all of my pieces cut out perfectly. And since my mat's dirty, I can just pull these right off very easily and they are all cut. Now you might be thinking, okay, Lindsay, that was a lot of work and a lot of expense just to cut out printables. But if you, what I like to do is create those cut lines and then save those files with the cut lines. And that way I only have to do all that work once. And then every time I want to go in and use another set of that printable, um, I can just open it up and it's ready to go. I don't have to do all those steps every single time. So usually what I'll do is when I buy a set from Illustrated Faith, I just get on, sit down real quick and immediately make those cut lines and save it that way. And that way they're ready to go and easy to print out and cut out. So uh, I hope that was helpful. I know there's still going to be people that have problems. Silhouette is just one of those things that's just kind of janky. Sometimes it works really easy and sometimes it doesn't. There's no rhyme or reason. It's super temperamental, <laughs> but when it works, it's great. So uh, check out my links down below and uh, I'll have a blog post as well with some links for you if you're wanting to look into getting the silhouette for yourself or uh, have some questions and things like that, please leave questions and comments down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer whatever I can and uh, give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.